Hello everyone, Pastor Phil again, continuing with the 10 signs or symptoms of a dying church, which we are going to turn into uh, 10, what we could, could we call it, 10 steps to a vibrant church or something. I'll do the flip side to this once I'm finished. But what we're talking about today, uh, the preference-driven church. Oh boy, is this an issue today. I'd probably call that consumer Christianity. That's where Basically, what happens, you think when somebody moves to a town, what do they do? They go around and they visit the churches and they find one they like. So, so when you find one you like, what are you looking for? Good parking, comfortable seat, air conditioning, friendly. You know, what are you shopping around for? Uh, preference driven church. But this is a symptom of a dying church because, you know, it's human nature to just want what we want and to have things go the way we want. And we're in a, we're in a, uh, time now with the internet where people just get cancelled and cut so easily. I disagree with you. That's it. You're cancelled. I'm not talking to you. I'm not listening to you. You know, the church, as a church, we need to mature by working through issues with each other. That means there's going to be difficult times. There's going to be uncomfortable times. It's not always going to be about you and your personal preferences. But let's see what it's a symptom of a dying and dead church. Me, myself and I. Everyone of the 14 autopsy churches had some level of this problem before they died. A significant number of the members moved the focus from others, which we just talked about in the previous talk, other focused the preaching of the gospel, from others to themselves. Oh, just be careful, of, I realise that too. You can focus on others and not be preaching the gospel. You can focus on others with social welfare. The church is not a welfare organisation. It's not our job to go into the world and feed everybody, clothe everybody, house everybody. If you think that's ministry, then there are plenty of pagan God-hating organisations that do exactly the same thing. Making people more comfortable in this world is not the commission. It's not our job. Now, that doesn't mean we don't care. Of course we care. If you see someone in need, you help them. If there's needs, you meet those needs. But that's not our focus. Social welfare, social justice is not the gospel. The gospel is the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we preach him Christ crucified, the power of God to salvation, calling people to repentance and salvation because we're saved by grace through faith in Christ. The gospel is the central core focus of our mission. So therefore, other focus means other focused and I love you enough to share the gospel with you and risk my relationship with you. Whereas when you do social welfare, social justice, people love you for it. And so you're not risking anything. You risk things when you share the gospel with people. But anyhow, let me go on. A significant number of the members move the focus from others to themselves. And when a church moves in that direction, it is headed for decline and then death. The decline may be protracted and the death may be delayed. But it is inevitable. The church will die. When we become a um, preference-driven church, we are on a road to the death of that fellowship. A church cannot survive long-term where members are focused on their own preferences. My music style, my desired length and order of worship services, my desired colour and design of buildings and rooms, my activities and programs, my need of ministers and staff, my, my, my. When you become self-focused in regard to the ministry in the church, um, that church is on its way to death. And how many people don't participate in fellowship with a church because they're so me-focused that when they go to church, they see all the things about the church they disagree with or don't like, and they're not prepared to work with people, uh, with brothers and sisters in Christ, with those difficulties. Um, that's also a bit of a problem, and it's really the same problem. I'm looking for the perfect church that does everything exactly the way I think it should be done. Um, Paul puts it powerfully and cognitively, make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus. So what did Jesus do? So this would be Philippians, I think it's Philippians 2, uh, who being equal with God, made himself of no reputation, coming in the form of a bond servant and, and ultimately dying on the cross. And he said, let this same mind be in you. So he did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. He emptied himself 
by assuming the form of a slave. This is Jesus we're talking about. He humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. And, and at the start of that passage in Philippians, it says, let this same mind be in you. So church is not about your personal preferences. And we shouldn't be sending the message of catering to people's personal preferences. When people come up and say, I prefer it like this and I prefer it like that, my attitude towards that would be, we're not here for your personal preferences. Sure, if we can make some simple changes, we'll make simple changes, but make sure, watch your heart, that you don't have an attitude of the church should be happening the way I think it should be happening. People should be saying what I think they should be saying. They should be doing what I think they should be doing. That's that personal preference driven church. And that sets the church on a road to death. Because when you do that, clearly we're not focused on the gospel. We're not focused on the Great Commission. We're not focused on sanctification, becoming more like Christ. Because if we were, in Philippians it says, um, he, Jesus, even though he created everything, humbled himself and, and took on the form of a bondservant or a slave and was obedient, obedient even unto death and let that same mind be in you. The life of a believer is one of sacrifice of self, sacrifice of your own personal sort of preferences and needs for the sake of the kingdom of God to serve him and to preach the gospel. Now, my experience, though, has been when you give up self, when you give up your own selfish ambition, when you give up your own personal desires, the Lord turns all that around and you end up greatly blessed. But the desire in your heart isn't the blessing that you get. The desire in your heart is to see the kingdom of God expand, to see people saved, to see people discipled, and to be actually sacrificing yourself in some sort of work or effort to be able to get the message of Jesus Christ out to the world. Now, every person has to work that out for themselves, obviously, because there's a measure of faith and there's a measure of giftedness. Some people are called to more than others, but just in your own heart. There's people around you that you can be sharing with, your family, your friends, your neighbours, and sacrificing yourself in church and saying, this is not about my personal comfort. Church is about the growth of us into Christ Jesus, the manifestation of Christ to the world. Uh, so we need to die to ourselves and live for Jesus, the way Jesus gave himself up in obedience to the Father and saved us all. Let me pray. Lord, I thank you for the example of your sacrifice. Forgive us, Lord, where we've uh, treated church like a a personal club wanting things to go the way we want. And Lord, forgive us for that. Forgive us for our selfishness. Forgive us for making it all about us. Help us, Lord, to be other focused, the lost, dying people in this world to share the gospel with them. And Lord, give us many opportunities, I pray, to grow and expand, to become vibrant. Lord, you will build your church. So help us to be preaching the truth of your gospel to see people saved to the glory of your name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.